Hi everyone, today I'm going to go over how I intercept traffic from Android applications. There's a few different ways to do this. This is the method I use. Um, it works for most native applications. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to set up is Burp Suite. This is the latest version. Um, community edition. Uh, you don't need any, like, you don't need the paid version to do this. Uh, yeah, so if you go to the proxy tab, and then options. We're gonna want to set up a listener on a different port. So the way you do that is you go to add and you put in the port number. So I already have one. Um, that's eight zero eight two. I'm just showing you exactly what you need to input. Uh, so you want to bind it to a port other than eight zero eight zero. And all interfaces is what I use. Um, I click OK. Yes. We are sure we want to do that. Okay. So I don't really need this uh, this third entry, so I'm just going to remove it. But that's how you add a listener. Um, and then once we're done with that, we can go back to intercept. We can just turn intercept off for now because like it's not set up on the emulator itself. Now... Let's go to the emulator and set up the emulator for uh, forwarding traffic to this listener. Um, so this is just an Android Studio emulator, um, and you you can run it from the actual emulator emulator manager that's in Android Studio. You can also run these from the command line to start them. You don't need to go through the graphic user interface. Uh, yeah, so let's go to the options, um, and the way you go to the options is you click these three buttons down here, uh, it'll open up this window, and it's in, it's under settings, so it's under settings, and then you go to man, manual proxy configuration. I tend to use my private, uh, network hostname. Um, and then the listener is going to be the listener I put in burp, which is 8082 for the port number. Um, now, now we can go ahead and set up the app. So you can see here, I just want to show you what the default app is sending. So the default app the way these flags work is they check for uh, they check remotely to compare if to compare the values. So if I just put some random value in here and push submit, I will get an I'll get an error. Uh, it says TLS connection to Firebase is not working correctly. Basically, so failed to negotiate TLS, all that good stuff. So now, so now what I want to do is patch this application. Um, so what what we need to do next is we need to pull this app off of the phone, unless you already have it on your computer, and patch it with objection. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and uninstall. Actually, let's just pretend like we got this app from Google Play. It's not uninstalled yet. Uh, and next we can look up the path for this particular app. So we can do A to B, shell, PM, path. Um, I think it's B through NAC, injured Android. And then this will give us the path that we need to pull. So we just need this part right here. Um, now we can ADB pull the base APK. Um, the thing is, though, is we don't want to name it base APK. I'm going to go ahead and remove the app here. So we, what, what we want to do is rename this to injured Android to keep it simple. Um, now we can ADB 
install the app. But we don't want to do that yet. We want to, now that we have it on our PC, we want to patch the app. So uninstall. Yes. And I have a couple of aliases that I use. Um, so the, the alias I use a patch is this alias. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically just running uh, this shell script. So I'll show you what the shell script contains. But this makes it so all I gotta do is type in objection dash patch and then um, you'll see with the shell script all I have to do is supply the source which is the APK in this case it's injured Android um, and this is uh, at the time I had to use a specific gadget version because there's a bug or whatever um, and then so the objection APK I was trying to uninstall it automatically and there was something yeah it just wasn't working correctly so now I just manually uninstall but this is like a starting point to how to automate this process and it's pr it's done pretty well so far for me um, so what I'm gonna do is just run the alias which is objection and patch and then injured Android And what this is going to do is it's going to patch the um, cert store and all that. Um, and then it's going to inject the Frida gadget so that objection can connect to it. Because we need to connect to it via objection to disable uh, cert pity. And it re-signs the APK. I'm not exactly sure the whole process and how and how it keeps the same uh, signature, but if you have the default app on your device still, and you try to install the objection, the patched APK, it won't let you install because they have the same signature. Okay, so it completed successfully. I'm gonna clear uh, clear the terminal so we can see the patched APK. Um, so now we can install injured Android uh, that's been patched, and all the patched APKs will have objection in the name. So um, after we install this app. We can then connect objection um, and what I use for that is the objection connect command um, and I will display that alias too because I have that alias so uh, it's not Oh yeah, so um, the alias for Objection and Connect that I have, it's just running the explore uh, command directly from the binary. And um, basically what this does is it looks for the gadget and connects to that gadget. So if I run Objection Connect, or uh, it was Objection Connect, I think. And it will connect to a remote free to server. Oh, that's because I don't have the app running, I think. So, yeah. So when you open the app after you patch the app, it'll stay in the launcher state, or the main, it'll pause the main launch state. And then after you connect, it'll continue with, it'll resume the process. Um, so, yay, it connected, and now we're at the main, now we're at the main, uh, launch screen for the app. So, 
What we want to run now is Android SSL pinning disable. And then this is going to go through um, all the common SSL libraries and stuff. And it's kind of going to try to overwrite them with like a blank, basically like a blank search store. And it's also going to, um, it's overriding SSL context, the verify chain method, and the check trusted recursive method. So, yeah, so it's kind of like uh, how you disable pinning on certain on certain plugins. Once you know the method, you can use Frida to override like certain pinning methods pretty easily. Um, yeah, so now if I go back to Firebase, you can see that it's overriding the trust manager with the empty one. So, um, yeah, earlier when I said the search store, I meant uh, trust manager. It'll override the trust manager every time that there's like a connection, an outside connection and stuff. Um, just to make the app think that it's a trusted connection. And you can see here, um, it over this requ this request was successful because of that, um, it, because it over the connection was overwritten with a trust manager that was empty. Um, and this is just like pinging the database, uh, the Firebase database. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can see in the user agent, it's just. Uh, Basically, just sending a test connection. And then there's just some random WebSocket data. Um, I actually realized that you can find the flag this way too after disabling cert pinning, which is pretty funny because I don't know if anyone uh, used this method to solve the flag. But if I put test and I submit the data, and then I go through all of this. Eventually, um, it'll display what the uh, database flag data is. Yeah, so you can see it's looking at flags. Um, and then this is the actual, this is the actual flag right here that it returns. And it returns the flag because it thinks that the connection is secure. So yeah. Um, and also these are HTTPS connections via WebSocket. And it's all working because of the, uh, the, uh, the cert pinning is disabled. So there, that is objection, and let's we can try another one just for fun. Uh, AWS, even with the authentication failing, it works, which is kind of surprising to me. So if I submit um, some more test data, it's looking up the um, the table name, which is AWS, or the flag name and then here's the flag once again the flag is uh, is displayed because the because um, Android SSL pinning is no longer working yeah so that is how you use objection to bypass cert pinning or SSL pinning um, yeah, I hope you found this video useful and it helps you in your security testing adventures. Until next time, everyone.